Open differential suck. <laughs> in this thing today. We're gonna use some million weight oil in there. I think it's got like 50k in it stock. If you lock up the rear diff in one of these things, it'll slide the back end around in corners. It'll have a little less grip in the corners and you'll have to learn how to control it as it kind of does more drifts. But it'll keep it from flipping over so much because right now you get turn in a corner, it loads up one side and then the other wheel just spins faster and it grabs the tire and flips. So I've never actually done this on one of these, but watch a few videos, it looks pretty straightforward. So let's start taking her apart. We'll get this middle skim plate off, move on to the rear. I think we got to pull the bumper off and maybe one screw in the bulkhead there. I think that'll be about it. We'll pop her open, clean it up, put some thicker stuff in there, and see how that works. Make sure you got a nice wobbly bit for safety. You gotta take out those two screws there. So I just realized after taking it all apart that the camera wasn't on. I just went to shut off the film and started it, but no big deal. I'll show you guys how it all goes back together and it's super simple. It's really easy, pretty hard to mess it up. So you just watch that, do it in the, do it backwards. Don't stress out about taking this stuff apart. If it's your first time, it's really, really easy. Alright, so these spider gears, facing in, flat side or side with no teeth, facing out. Just slide them on there. Exact same thing on the other side. There's a slot right there. Same thing on the other one. You're just gonna put those together. Like that. Grab your input gear or whatever the hell this is called. Probably completely unnecessary, but that's all right. I'm using marine grease to help keep the water out. You can tell me in the comments why that's a bad idea. I'm sure it is, but that's all right. 
take your spider gears without them all falling apart and just set it right back in there make sure they spin that's how you put them back together the exact same thing taking them apart I wish I would have actually hit record when I took it apart but it's the exact same thing take the ring gear off it's a couple four two millimeter bolts there'll be a bunch of grease in here kind of wipe her down get as much as you can out push on the back of that everything pops right out it's pretty hard to mess it up anybody can do it if you can pull tires off and turn a screwdriver you can do this now hopefully this fluid is thin enough that I can just squeeze it in there it's been in the warm water for probably a good 10 minutes now You gotta squeeze the crap out of her still, even though it's nice and warm. This stuff's gonna work really good. I think this is definitely gonna lock her right up. Sorry, it's hard to keep this on screen. I gotta squeeze the crap out of her. I'm just going to let that sit there for probably 10 minutes or so. Let it work its way in. Alright, so I came back after 10 minutes and I barely soaked in at all. So I ended up going over and holding this in front of my heater for a good 2 or 3 minutes just to get that stuff hot enough to sink in. So it looks like it's in there pretty good. I'm going to top it up some more and do that again. But it looks like keeping your oil in some hot water and then just going to heat up the diff in front of a, a heater or something. That looks like that's the way to do her. Stuff so thick, you gotta curl it like you work at Dairy Queen. Alright, so I brought this thing out, put it in front of the heater for a couple minutes, and I started to get that oil a little bit loosened up. Got her soaked down in there. Probably a little bit more full than it should be. So I'll watch it all come squared out when I go to put the ring gear back on it. But, whatever, should be fine. So we're going to take our ring gear, try to line up the holes.
There we go. So I just had to mess with it a bit because it wasn't sitting flat all the way around there. I don't know if I just had something that wasn't lined up, but got her now. So let's put these bolts back through here. Would definitely be a good idea to put a tiny bit of blue thread locker on these, just like I didn't do. Hopefully I don't end up making a video where the diff pulls itself apart, but if I do, we all know why, because I'm an idiot. Take the bearings for the outputs of the diff, and get a good layer of grease on them. And the small bearing goes on the side away from the ring gear. Now that I've got way too much grease all over everything, see how many times I can drop stuff putting it back together and how much of a mess we make. All right, we're gonna pack this diff cover full of grease and then throw everything back together. So I went and got a pair of gloves I found in the kitchen because I'm sick of washing this grease off my hands. So we're gonna put our doctor gloves on and pack this thing full. That's, that's pretty damn good, I think. Some people like to put just a tiny bit in there, and I know from the factory there wasn't a whole lot. But I wanna make sure there's tons of lube in there, and hopefully keep all the water out. So this excess grease coming out of here is actually a really good thing because all the way around there where the grease is coming out is going to help keep the water out too. And I'll keep everything inside from getting rusty. Alright, so take these pins out of the A-arms and just put a tiny bit of grease on them. through there's one
this little aluminum piece next. All right, on to the rear skid plate. There we go, pretty easy. We'll flip her over, throw the tires on, and I'll show you what a difference it makes now, how it's actually a locker. So there we go, tires are on, Diffs back together, the front's still stock. The front's an open diff. So you spin one tire, the other one goes the other way. The spider gears are just spinning free. And that's why when you go in a corner, it picks up the inside tire and just balloons the tire because all the power is going to the one that doesn't have grip. Now if we look at the rear, probably will spin a little. No, oh, look at that, fully locked up. So you spin the one tire, the other one goes the same way. And it spins all four, because there's no slip in the rear at all. So the rear end's pretty much full locker now. It's going to slide around a lot more. I'm going to leave the front stock for a couple runs and see what it drives like. But I might end up putting some 500,000 up front. So... We'll get out here and test out the diff and uh, put some wide hubs on this thing in the next video. So check back in in a couple days. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good one.